Brian Slams with Paul Fuller and I'm one of the members of the Democracy Commission. Um, unfortunately, because we've got a, a visit to another council and one or two members who are unavailable uh, and a couple who are ill, uh, you stuck with me. <laughs> Do any interrogation one me, uh, yeah. and, we, and I've got three officers, Spencer, Carl and Jack here, do it. they're taking notes and Spencer's doing the technical bit. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'll just give you a little bit of, um, little bit of background. Um, I've been chairing a members commission for the last couple of years, which was a, a small all party focus uh, group which has been just really um, looking at how the role of the councillor might change in the next five, ten years, um, what we need to do to attract um, more people to become councillors, uh, but that started to raise bigger questions about um, the role of the councillor's relationships with citizens social media becoming so dominant in the people's lives uh, so we decided to set up the democracy commission which again is uh, an all party uh, body uh, and it has an independent chair Dr Andrew Mycock from Huddersfield University uh, and I should apologise that he's not here as well um, I understand he's at the moment in transit to London so Okay. Now over the summer we've held a number of engagement exercises around Kirklees uh, and begun a, begun a program of public evidence gathering uh, of which this is one um, and as I mentioned we've visited other councillors um, and we're continuing to do that probably until the early part of next month and then we'll be getting together and sifting all the evidence that we've taken. So your contribution today is going to be uh, particularly valuable in the areas that uh, we know you've got expertise in. And so thank you very much indeed for giving up some of your time to, to help us out. That's okay, we're sitting in my study room for the cups of tea. Um, <laughs> we, we just think you've got some contact. Uh, I mean, I, I, this is now speaking, I, I come from, uh, from, uh, I was from a, an, an officer's standpoint primarily, so uh, I was duly paid in the local authority from that and the improvement and development agency, and probably over the years of visitors, over 150 local authorities up and down the country, so I've worked with quite a lot of them. And, and Peter's uh, much more of uh, an expert on democracy and activism but I was complex around the world, so it's our conversation item, which has been uh, quite uh, crucial to what we've done here in Britain, so I'll just give you a bit of background. Right, thanks. Well, as, as part of our work so far, obviously the is issue of devolution of power and decision making to lower levels uh, has been a regular theme. Based on your experiences there, what do you considered to be the issues and opportunities we need to be considering when um, making recommendations on how best to devolve power and decision making down to our local areas. Okay, so this is Peter speaking. I mean, uh, uh, one of the reasons why we, Mel and I, and the others of us, um, got involved in local politics, which none of us had been before, it was that we, we knew localism was coming. And so we knew that um, uh, there, was, there was suddenly this potential, um, we thought, <laughs> um, for real power, if you like, to, to come down um, to, to our level, which is a parish town level. So we're a large town, we're a large town. And what we are, yeah. Um, so, um, uh, and, and I think my experience of the last six years have been um, one largely of disappointment, well, I may speak for myself uh, here, but largely of disappointment in the fact that it's taken so long for that to, to really happen. And then that's been consistently um, undermined from above, particularly in our case with a, with a very intransigent um, district, um, which is very political, and, and they sort of held, held what has come down, that little which has come down has been held at a district level. So where, where I'm going with this is that I think 
Well, I think the main difference is the reality and realism. I mean, the, the, to get people involved and to, and to get to stay involved, to get people to become councillors um, and to, to engage at all, they have, to, they have to be able to see that, that the time that they're putting in um, really leads to results. I mean, it's very obvious, isn't it, that this, this I think, um, that people put in a vast amount of voluntary time and then again and again that either wanders into the long grass all these trumps from above, you get the credit quickly, you get the solutions. I think we've got a real problem in Primal or, or, you know, in that sense that and we may have even reached as far as the science we can go in bringing people in. Because because time and time again, you know, what we've put hours and hours of work into and done lots of really good cool grassroots consultation got people excited about, then um, it, it, it's it's um, you know, taken away at those at, at higher levels. So for me, it's, it's all about finding ways in which people can, can really put time in, say what they want, and then get it done, and be seen to get it. Or, if they can't get it, at least they're absolutely clear on why they can't. There has to be that circle. Would you... S- uh, sorry. Well, can I just pull up a little bit of that? Because uh, I observed this from both sides of the line. One of the interesting things that we've done is because we are independents, we we advertise for councillors, uh, and what uh, and one of the myths that we blown away here is that people don't want to start as councillors, and, and but actually that hasn't been a problem. So in 2015, when we stood again. And again, and once again, we put out an advert which basically said, "What can you do for food? We're not interested in how how you grow it." Uh, we had over forty people who wanted to stand as councillors. We had to then form a little a little uh, group who would then decide who would be councillors who themselves weren't to stand. So that was a cross section of people from across the town. And then we ran some uh, exercises over a weekend. What that meant was that we were drawn from a much wider gene pool than from the traditional parties, who really can only select from their own party books. Uh, and what that does is that turns up, uh, turns up people with all sorts of skills and experiences. This is not, um, even though Peter and I might be, this is not a, a, a middle class environment, uh, and we don't you know, have exclusively middle class councils. But what we have got is people who want to stand and have one thing clearly in their mind, not necessarily to uh, talk, their party be more successful or to be re-elected, but to actually do something for their local community and neighbourhood. But for me, that's a fundamental shift in terms of how people see the world. So we need to go back a little bit and think, how do people get to be councillors? Are you are you are you finding that you're getting people coming forward who are really just one issue politicians basically? No, no. I think that's absolutely right. What we've attracted is people who who care about free. I mean, free is geographically in the top corner of the district and the county, and I've only had a. Um, uh, a bit of a reputation for wealthiness and for, for independence. We don't see any of it, but we're speaking in so mind. So in a way, we're an easy place to do that. And there's a sense of fluidness, I think, which, which helps, which is absolutely not the unique thing, but it definitely helps. So no, no, I don't think I mean, there are people with expertise, I don't think there's one thing I can think of with particular areas of interest. It's, it's sports and he runs the football club and so on. That doesn't mean that he's been a one track pony at all, but his contacts through the football club and through have been invaluable to us because he's, we've got contacts which, you know, which are related to forever, which, you know, which others of us don't. Yeah, and, and, the, and the group that selected the councillors uh, actually wanted to try and get a mixed back. And so we're 50 50 women and men, I guess we're. Everybody, everybody except me and one other dancer that works in one form or another. Um, they, uh, they have this, they have a real, um, kind of mixture of skills, as Peter said it. And I've just liked it, I've just been writing to him this morning for a talk I'm going to give next week, um, in Birmingham. It was a bit like throwing a box of fireworks onto a bonfire. Uh, it was, it all went up at once, and there was a kind of, sort of 
leading up to the send or uh, and you won't quite sure what's going to happen. You're certainly probably going to break in there with windows, uh, and you won't quite sure when it was all going to end. Uh, and that is a fundamental shift from what was there before, when you had the thermal, and I'm sorry to use these words, thermal people who were standing door after year uh, and had no fresh ideas. And so that, that innovation of new ideas, and suddenly kind of a spur that was put up, everybody across the town recognised it. And of course, we had 10 councils out of 17, the first time we were elected in 2011. And then when we went for the election in 2015, we won't have any I mean, nobody predicted that. So we beat the you know, other party in concern for the terms of the UK and so on. Uh, and what people appreciated was we were just like them. Yeah, we were professional politicians. You mentioned um, the, the, Bolsh the traditional Bolshiness of, uh, uh, of the area. How much, how much is local identity important to the people that you engage with? Sorry, is there a local identity? Um, I, I, don't, I know I said about the devotion. I'm, I'm not sure that that's a crucial factor. No, I don't think it is. I think it's, I think it more or less the fact that there's nothing that we're, we're one of them and the other, I mean, you know, we, we, we got rid of a lot of the, um, well, I can say the bit of crap that stands between, between councils and people. So one of the, the, the very first thing we did at the very first meeting was to get rid of all the committees, um, to suspend all the whole committee structure. So that, that then gave us time to have a look. Because usually there's this mighty insane uh, first item on the agenda where you left them there and people to committees. When, People don't know what committees are, they don't know what their skills are, and you know, they probably don't know what the role of the mayor is. And so, you, you're off to a terrible start in a normal uh, council um, or proceedings. And it, it's actually called people who've been there before, and they know what to do and how to pull the strings, and maybe it'll happen. Um, so, we did that from the beginning, and then we very quickly moved to get rid of a lot of the, the language that excludes people. We don't have a three minute. Um, business where can only speak for three minutes, we love the public speak next to the agenda item that they, they want to speak about and that kind of thing, which is very challenging in terms of chairing and managing meetings, but we think give the, uh, you know, it helps to break down a lot of those things. I've rambled a bit from you from what you asked me, but I think it's, um, it, you know, I think, that, I think that's, that's a lot of what we try to do is to, is to you know, take, take away Trying to make the council something which is part of the community. I understand it, Kurt Lee is made up of a series of, uh, of towns and communities anywhere, so that the good business and you can tap into there. Yeah, you're right. I mean, um, Kurt Lee's was a, an artificially uh, yeah. designed body in the 70s when it was put together, um, and we still have some of our areas are still. Uh, Got town councils and parish councils, but uh, uh, the majority, the majority hasn't. And one of the things that we are looking at is to uh, whether it would be uh, well to recommend that those areas consider um, having town or parish councils. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've been a lot of uh, committees in in from London boroughs to counties to metropolitan. The districts, and I've never seen anything like like we have here, uh, which is incredibly informal, uh, very easy going. Uh, we get sometimes we get quite large numbers of people joining us. I mean, it's not unusual to get fifty or sixty people to come to a council meeting. Uh, and what I found is that rather than restricting them from speaking, and um, if we allow them to. Um, to, to act as adults, so they continue like adults. So, you know, they, they, they become part of the debate. And, and what we, we've even gone further in the last few months, and, and basically, councillors don't sit on the top tail any longer. They sit cafe style uh, with their constituents. Uh, and the only way you can tell who are councillors is uh, people who can raise a, a, a orange sheet of paper when, when they're ready to vote. So it's easier here. Because, you know, as we've often said, nobody's having to get it wrong. 
because of the, the, the nature of the services and uh, the issues that we attract. It's more difficult in, in a, a metropolitan district like yours, where there were some very serious uh, and meaty issues to be tackled. So I wouldn't say that that was a, necessarily a way forward for everybody. But if you are actually thinking about uh, some kind of neighborhood proposals, and, that, and I've looked on neighborhood proposals for Islington, Tower Hamlets, and uh, South Somerset when they did it. Um, and that is the way forward because certainly you you you're actually asking people how do we address the issues um, in your neighbourhood? Uh, so it's not necessarily as, as normal committees which are done in a, a, a functional way. It's taking it as a whole. What are the issues here that we need to address? And they might not be council issues. They might be issues that the local residents and people of that area need to take up themselves. That, well, that brings that brings me on to uh, the possible tensions or indeed opportunities that exist between representative and participatory democracy. I mean, your councillors are representing a block of the town, yet you say you get good attendances at council meetings where people clearly want to participate in the decision-making process. Is, 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 yeah, that, and, and, is that a fair and solution? Can, yeah, and it is. And I've um, and got rid of that slide. You can see my body smile when I was describing that last one. It's some of the, 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 very, the very active meeting. And, and you're absolutely right. There is that, um, that tension. And we've had a meeting about, about six weeks ago now where he was, um, yeah, at the end of it, and I was far from happy um, because all that had rather pushed into way off the sort of the represented and into the part that participated. There were a number of other factors that came in, but essentially um, it was very clear to carry off. Um, and, and as I said earlier, I think it takes a, a very different style of, of chairing or a very different way of, of chairing because it, it, it clearly went to facilitating the meeting rather than chairing it. It's much easier a chair, I mean, having done both as a sort of formal mayor where you're, you know, you've got a lot of councillors and, and you're just listening to people very clearly, you know, there's a set of rules, that's a much easier thing to, to run than having all where people are bouncing around all over the place. Um, and I actually, I think we've built that up over the last five or six years, we've kind of built a, a, a respect um, from the core of people who will often come to meetings. Um, and obviously we've got the rules to fall back on. Somebody who actually come from um, a Monmouth to, to see how many meetings sit in the South so you just ended the standing orders. And, and we haven't formally suspended the standing orders. They're there. Um, and we could use them in the sense of, um, you know, pulling it back to just councillors speaking and so on if, if um, things were out of hand. But that balance is, is a really tricky one, isn't it? And, and I think, for me, it, it, it um, it depends a bit on the issue, to be honest, because what you need, for our way, what you, to reach decisions, you have to have people who are well informed, you know, you, if you have a room full of people who are basically voting or, or going with an opinion based on a hunch, and you know, be such a clever way to do it, there's some issues, perhaps, I'm, I'm trying to think of a way of saying it, which doesn't sound too derogatory, but some things which are more complex, well, I think we inevitably have to feel more like representative uh, decision making and should because actually there'll be a whole stack of information which people will need, the councillors will need to have um, got to and the work they would have need to have done before. And if you, if you simply run that as a, as a, as a, a meeting in which there's a, you know, everyone's bouncing in with their ideas, you could easily go down and uh, you know, get some of the quite right. So I think mean, it's, it's it's, it's, a, it's a careful mixture um, uh, of how much you can put in that participatory side. We've also run things uh, which we call panels, which were based on Podemos, the Spanish political party circles, where we took issues, uh, a single issue like, say, all tradition in the room, and then ran um, three or four very um, carefully, well, we have the community meetings on these days, they're going to be these times, and, and they aim that to bring in as many people who have interest in, in this case, for and in through, and will live with them. But it's not, a, it's not in a council setting, so you can be in the sport of a football club so you can have a drink afterwards and so on. Or, um, and, and they will 
hugely successful in bringing in a much wider, well they are, we're still running them, um, they bring in a much, much wider group of people again with a real expertise. And you get that expertise, that group makes the recommendations, and then the council is basically obliged to accept those recommendations. And we still go through a process, particularly of prioritising and budgeting. Um, but it wouldn't work if the council then, as I said before, then trumped that by, by overruling it. But well, just remember that if you're talking about uh, neighbourhoods, area committees, town, uh, 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 parish and town councils, what people are really concerned about, I think what I've found, uh, is, is not the kind of, it's not high level stuff. It's like, what's, you know, what's happening in my streets? What's happening in my neighbourhood? What about the dog shit? Who, who's who's thought to be cleaning the street? Why isn't there anybody uh, supervising the kids over the road to go to school? Well, how come there's, uh, there's a whole new set of, 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 of criminals and uh, it's all printed from the same place and you know, looking into uh, you know, sheds and whatever? That's the kind of thing that, that they want to get into. And, and that is normally excluded from most committee processes because, you know, you say, well, we've got very important business to take care of. We don't want you to be talking about the individual thing. That's what they want to talk about. And that's the TNA that makes up their community. So they're really key. And so that's what gets big well for us, is talking about, the, you know, talking about their neighbors, their, their, their relatives, uh, and what concerns them or their, their, their daughters. How, how do you... Okay. Sorry. How do you um, how do you go about making sure that um, the, the the public are fully informed and in a position to be able to um, make a meaningful contribution to the eventual decisions that are taken? Is it the other way around? How do you get the councillors to have a, a fully informed and then meaningful decisions? Um, why do we assume that the people who are uh, uh, members of the public can't understand uh, quite complex issues? I don't know, uh, uh, I'm not too sure. Why we, we obviously, we spend quite a lot of time putting stuff on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, putting out agendas, everybody who comes in gets an agenda, you know, every item's got, uh, uh, it's flashed up on the screen behind us in terms of the main points. People pick up really quickly if you trust them, seems to me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm making, making notes while I'm. Uh... Uh, yeah, that's right. It's quite a typical process. The in engagement we've had with uh, with the public here uh, has revealed to us that they think that councillors could do more to help strengthen their local communities. Um, I s working on the basis that I'm, I'm assuming you probably agree with that statement. Um, what sort of things should we be looking to? encourage our elected members to do to uh, to achieve that. Mm. I, I, I'm sure you're right because that definitely goes with an earlier part of conversation. So over all of our period of, of independence of, of, of running through, we put around 10% of our budget um, into community organisations supported by um, professional input on fundraising. So we have um, well, uh, to support with fundraising, and with a number of staff who 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 are well who are community project officers, who are working in communities to help strengthen communities and help help to work with organisations. And I don't know how how this fruit is in terms of other things. It's often stated as a lot of organisations, but I haven't lived anywhere else for thirty years. But we do seem to have a a really buzzing voluntary sector. And for me, that's the place to do it through. You know, if, if that is strong, and by that I mean not just the, the, the larger organisations, putting a lot of time into uh, and, and support to tiny groups of people, small groups of people who are, um, I don't know, maybe taking tea to, to groups of elderly people on a Sunday afternoon, to, to really small things like that. But that's what, that's the level to build um, community cohesion. And, and 
we're putting a lot of, uh, of time and effort and, um, into that. Along with, we have, I think, a fairly unique uh, position of um, uh, a resilient officer. Now, her role has been primarily around uh, climate change and, and that sort of resilient environmental resilience. But actually, that, that spread into, into community issues as well. So that you know, things like a, a chair shop, and a, uh, which is um, a place where you can borrow things for nothing and, ch and, ch and share things, and it's used to be free and so So those are things which have come from her work. Now again, making I'm, I'm moving away from what, from what you're asking about. I, I think I think that they, well, in fact, building of a really cohesive and joined that network community, um, that that is politics to me. It's not it's not party politics, but we have we don't have party politics. So. So what we're trying to do is to get people into positions and situations where they're talking about and acting on things that matter in their lives. Um, and in that way, the councils are involved in those things as well as they're likely to be. If they're going to events, if they're involved because it's their group, they will pick up those things. And again, it breaks down that barrier between councils and people, which we've, we've tried to do a lot and um, try to break that down a lot. We've I don't think we're very good at this, to be honest, um, as individual councillors, partly because you know, we're stuck in this three-tier system of, of the parishes, districts and counties, so it's a kind of overlay of overlay of overlay, and it's, that, that confuses the issue for everybody. Uh, so our stance has been that we don't necessarily want to be many social workers and advocates for individuals who've got a particular problem with one of the services who actually buy samples from the officer. So rather than, you know, lots of councillors, they see their traditional role as picking up a problem for their, for their constituents, going to the officers, getting it sorted out, taking the message back, and then learning the cue box out of that. Well, that's quite a long-winded process, and there are lots of um, bits of the chair that can be broken. Well, I'm not quite sure it really helps to improve services and to make sure that, that it just makes that individual care better. So, so basically, we try to, to stay away from that uh, and to play roles that uh, Peter suggested. Now, uh, that's what is that's what causing problems, to be honest. So I think we're a little bit distant sometimes from what is actually really happening in some in, in some streets and, and with, with some people. So, uh, it kind of mixed messages there really in terms of how, how we're performing. And just like one thing that we, we um, like most councils, had a, um, a planning committee. And one of the committees we got rid of was the planning committee. And what we have is a planning advisory group. And the, the difference between those two is that rather than people, the good people of Green coming to us as a town parish council and, and bringing forward their whole case about, you know, the neighbours door the window or whatever it might be, and feel that they have been consulted to it, they've done their bit. Um, you know, and then realise or don't realise that actually we don't have the power that the district does. And so they make a plan decision, you know, which may well have nothing to do with what we recommended or not. We, we never, um, as, as Mark said, it's basically steer people to the district where they need to be. And we as a town take up the bigger issues and put the time and effort into um, work, again, working with people to understand what they want on, on, on the bigger planning issues. So it's, it's going to get rid of that uh, deception, I think, that uh, actually councillors can do things very often. Now, our MP had that, I think, every month, which goes in the paper saying, you know, uh, if you have any problems, come to my surgery. It's like, what an insane thing to say to me. It's like, what, what problems is he thinking of? Because he does get me. There's lots of questions, or the, the rent, or the, you know, it's, a, it's, it's the wrong way around to be doing that. We should be empowering people to take their decisions to where they to where the decision makers are rather than using a limited resource um, in that way. Just to, you know, I just follow up one other point, because it's kind of slightly humorous, really. It's interesting now that we have kind of recognised that we don't, we don't, we're not pretending we've made a planning decision any longer. So what we do do is we actually fund <laughs> advocates from the local community, whether it's lawyers or planning experts, on big schemes. We then argue against the district council, and uh, as you might imagine, uh, they're not really like that. Um, the event is quite popular in town, we you know, we're taking, we're picking up the poll of the issues of the residents on the ground, and we're translating that into a planning language and using it against, uh, you know, where some of the planning decisions are made. Um, so, uh, that's a kind of an interesting way of what 
approaching this kind of problem. Mm. It's interesting because I was having a conversation with a representative of one of our town councils yesterday evening, um, and she said that one of the things that frustrated them was whenever the planning committee uh, here in Kirklees actually goes against a recommendation that they've made locally. Um, they believe that if if they recommended refusal, then it should automatically be refused by the planning yeah. committee here. Yeah. So they can, every time that happens, there's no the problem with your relationship, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, I've got to be honest, I mean, I've spoken to hundreds of parish councils as well over the last year, because we won the council of the year. Um, most of them, uh, uh, one of your problems would be most of them are fairly conservative, um, uh, uh, not very adventurous, uh, very traditional in the way that they do it. So, if you were to go down that route and incorporate it into any program that you've got, there's a real uh, training program that needs to be undertaken, a development program for individuals and for whole councils. Um, certainly for early committees and other committees in my dad that because you just can't make the leap from where they are now into where you would want them to be and nothing, nothing nationally suggests that that's going to change now it was the National Association of Local Councils are um, have got the point uh, they're, they're not the most certain organisations <laughs> um, we have, well, I mean we have had various um, experiments in devolving Locally, yeah. and all we've managed to create are mini Kirklees councils in the areas, and you know that. You don't want me to do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, because well, basically, because uh, at, that's how people see themselves. They've got a fundamental, there's going to be a fundamental shift, I think, in how pe uh, people's thinking is going to be a slightly from the bottom up, and also. It's going to be the bottom up, but it's got to be with some professional advice. So, and in, in these times, it's difficult. But having you know some professional officer who works exclusively for that community, even if it might be against the um, the council, is 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 really crucial. Do you remember? I don't know. I don't know how old you are by your voice, but I spent a lot of time many years ago in Warsaw with the uh, you know the other whole neighbourhood scheme. And, uh, it did more part in the end because of infighting within the, the local party, but it was quite an interesting experiment. Uh, the whole town was divided into the neighbourhoods, the neighbourhood officers, uh, neighbourhood officers, uh, and for a while it was extremely exciting. And you know, they, they, even the uh, people the local authority housing was hired off to these neighbourhoods and they could do what they wanted. Um, but uh, you know, it's, in, in, in this time of austerity, when you know, you know, you know, your budget has been cut by four percent, I, I don't think that option, that option is open to you. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> and, and also, there's a, the, the, there's a reluctance for those with the hands on the levers of power in Kirklees to release any of that. So the neighbourhood. People don't climb to the top of the mountain to pull themselves off, don't they? Um, so that's, and that's one of the, if you don't win that over, then this isn't going to work. Because you have, you have to be absolutely willing to be able to give away power. And one of the things that, that we started off very early here was we would start organisations. So we have a, something called Fair Food, which is about equality, food bank, um, furniture store or whatever, we set them up, we paid them up, we said immediately, you do it, you know, better than we're the trustees, you're independent, you make your own decisions, uh, which was a fa fantastic move, but there's a whole series of things like that we set up, but basically we said, we, we aren't in check, we're just, we're just fungible, we, how you doing, it's up to you, get on with it, uh, and that's what needs to happen in this case, but as you saw it, the powers that be, but I think I've, but that's why it's really interesting that you have this commission that you're doing that's going to work on presumably a bit of reduction, somebody back down the line must have uh, must have recognised that democracy is not working well. And of course you've been thinking about it before Brexit and before Trump and before other things that happened. So um, you know, you, it's, you, I think it's, it's a real pressing bit of work, but therefore, and hopefully, therefore, you also have the courage to, or we're able to make the decision in the end to go with something like else, but surely they will and will involve a devolution of power because if it doesn't, um, then the whole thing is frankly a world of crime. But for me, going back to the very first thing I would say, it's, it's two 
chip and egg, if you don't, if you can't give real powers and real um, decision making to the lower levels uh, or the other ones, then people will never get engaged. You won't attract new council. You won't attract people like me who have other things to do in life. Um, no, because, because why would I get involved? So unless uh, there's a lot of deeper, a genuine evolution of power, then you won't have to back for real disappointment with locals. Because for me, because that third pace in me doesn't happen. What tensions exist between yourselves and district level? And in, partic okay. in particular, the, uh, obviously you'll have elected members at district level who will cover your patch. Uh, interestingly, um, the, the, the ones that cover our patch are generally lived at, so we're really at the views of the world whatsoever. Um, uh, we can't do that okay, actually. Uh, but with the district itself, it's, uh, we tried every technique. Uh, we tried humor, we tried aggression, we tried being assertive, we tried being rational, we tried being nice, and people who can lead a free, you know, pushing the bus nice for those in the line, and purely to try and get on the logistic. Um, none of which has worked. They are, um, you know, unreconstructed conservatives, so our philosophy is very different. But because we were saying, decisions that they are locally from the bottom up, and they don't believe in that at all, um, we've, well, we've settled into an extra thing going for the stage now, um, which is actually the, the best position we've ever been in. Um, so, it, 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 it's living it's living something because they control land, and we've always had to sort of recognise that some of that money, like new homes, owners, and the well, money that we thought would come to us, uh, happened and never will. Uh, no, but, but actually, it, it, yeah, um, we are massively constrained by the limitation of how to district that um, that doesn't understand what we are trying to do and like doesn't, doesn't want to understand. Well, that might be a danger for you if you if you if you scale that up to uh, countries and whatever it is that you might want to put in place at a more local level. That the, the nature of the relationship you just described could you could reproduce that, couldn't you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so that's why you believe the people who've got the power to actually be genuinely wanting to judge. Hmm. I was I know I was I was I was I was trying to work out a diplomatic way of responding to that bearing in mind that I'm surrounded by four officers and uh, <laughs> our, um, our, our engagement exercise also uh, revealed that there's mixed views about communities here doing more for themselves the the the, the, the old adage is, well that's why we have councillors um, but clearly councillors role is uh, changing uh, and rather than just being here to exercise powers it were more now enabling our communities to do more for themselves uh, but there is it would appear some sort of tension between those who think well that's why that's why I pay the council tax uh, and those that are keen to Participate themselves. Um, have you? Ex did you ever experience that sort of tension? And if so, how do we get over it? I'll start with the educational process here which needs to be undertaken, and we're just about starting down that route. I don't think that most people realise that the, uh, the traditional services welfare state is over as we as we as we know it. Uh, and so there's, a, there's, there's, there's something that we've got to start saying and saying quite clearly that it isn't coming back. Uh, now, you're not going to recover from your 40% reduction. Um, you're never going to be able to run those, those fantastic services that you used to run a decade ago, two decades ago. Um, and so people are going to learn the hard work, individuals out there on the street. But we, as local civic leaders, need to be making that quite clear 
it's not necessarily precisely the government uh, could be, um, but it actually, you know, we are in this together, and a whole lot of dreadful stuff were done by uh, Campbell and Osborne. But somehow or other, we need to, we need to accept that we're going to have to help each other more than we, we've done in the past. So, so yes, there's still some resistance, and that's why we've decided to really uh, up our, um, the game we play with the military sector, the third sector groups, and actually start working with and through them, so sort of providing training to make sure that they set up right and effective. Uh, finding resources for a small council, we bring in a lot of money from the lottery and the sources and took hundreds of thousands um, because we take it seriously and we help them to make peace. And we work through those groups, and if you think about it, if you've got one group that's got a particular issue, you might have 10 trustees, 60 volunteers, they spread the word, they say this is good. So that's been our route out into, you know, we need to make things happen together. And what we're looking at now is where are the gaps and social services disappear even more. Uh, we started to take a, a, a kind of more, a, 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 a clearer role in terms of, okay, okay, that's happening. What do we do? Or how do we push other people to fill in the world gaps? And it seems to me that that's, a, that's, that's, that's unique to each child in London as well. So you need to find what are the problems here, what are the issues, and what are we going to do about it? And actually, there may be nothing we can do about it, but we should be saying that to people, quite clearly, you know, because if they continue with our expectations, um, then the whole philosophy is going to sell out very badly. You know? yeah.
you suddenly start to get a much bigger input because you are not having to wage your way through large amounts of bureaucracy, you understand the problems, you know about a lot of the other people who are involved. And then you can wrap your arms around them and say, well, why don't we do this then? Um, whereas if you, if you were working, you probably would have volunteers bureau across two or threes, um, but actually if you get it down to a local level, you can really start addressing proper issues. And that's, and that's funded, and that's been done in partnership with them two Rotary Clubs in the line, so, and, and again, like the earlier organisation, so that Mel mentioned, the agents have gotten to become an independent body, uh, whether it be a charity or a CIP or whatever, it's yet to be determined, but it will become something in two or three years which is independent and independently funded, so it's not, a, it's not something which the council needs to fund forever, and it's owned by and vetted by the, the community, and therefore has that whole feeding back through the community of Again, trustees and members and volunteers and people's wives and friends and family. It's 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 funny that you uh, when you were mentioning about uh, making sure that people appreciate the choices that are, be, are having to be made. Because at that moment, I was just writing down the word choices after <laughs> after putting flow of information. Is it is it vital in your opinion? that the information that comes from the council to the public so they can appreciate the choices that you've got to make and put those decisions in some sort of context. Yeah. And yeah, how, yeah. how do you do that? How, how do you make okay. sure that happens? We just... Actually, I think we've just recognised that we need to do a lot more on that, on that front. Um, the contextual decision, which is why we had a little bit of a, a clash in last week's paper, because we we need to start thinking about that, because some things we do are totally unseen. A lot of what we described, uh, what people like to see is, you know, they like to see something physical, a new set of seats or more flowers. Uh, so the unseen stuff, you know, you do loads of that, of course, please, doesn't get appreciated. So we need to start pushing that forward. Uh, much more and um, telling a story and that's really where social media is going to be so much more crucial uh, than it has been in the, in the past because I know some people out on it but you know most figures would say somewhere around like 70 percent of people use a smartphone or a tablet well you know, if you can get to that then you can start you know making things a little bit more exciting. I mean, because generally people don't want to know what's going on in the council. So it has to be regular, it has to be updated, it has to be, it has to be sexy. Uh, and we've just employed somebody who, uh, who will do that for us, we hope, uh, because of because of our background. Because I, I think that a fundamental part of local government is communication and getting the message across. And we're crap at it normally. I mean, really crap. Uh, and if you look at where the private sector are going and how they deal with it, how they sell goods nowadays, it's completely different from the leaflets and newspapers that we tended to go in, go for in, in previous years. So up the map is, is enormous. And if, it, if it, all the things we've described, because I guess we're probably coming somewhere near an end, we're okay at this end, uh, but uh, the town council's budget is, I'll be saying it's a million pounds a year for a population of nearly 30,000. So everything we've described, and we've already talked to you about half of what we haven't talked about, electric car club, the voluntary car scheme, the crowdfunding through the first people in, in, in the country in Paris, town council on the dealer, all for a million pounds. I mean, we do supplement our budget considerably by my other monies. Uh, but you know, that's not a lot in the context of your overall budget. If you could recreate something we could do just some of the things we've been talking about. And we don't get everything right. That's the other thing. We turn up and we actually say, oh, we've fucked up there. Yeah. Let's yeah. just let everybody know that this has just not worked. So rather than that kind of hiding things, we're quite transparent. So I was going to swear in there for your recording. <laughs> How have you managed to maintain a political free zone for so long? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I mean, Mel, Mel, Mel being values to me, and he's right. I mean, 
It's a different way of doing politics, I think. And it's not, it's not easy to get across. Um, and I'll, I'll try for the next couple of minutes, um, or whatever, however long it takes. I mean, in, what we said at the beginning in 2011 was, this is how we will behave. This, this is how we will behave as a group of individuals working together. And this is how we will behave uh, with you, the public. So as a group, we'll do way more listening. We won't get attached to ideas that, um, that are particularly, either so, so attached to an idea that I can't listen to anybody else. We'll change our minds. We'll make mistakes. We'll do all those things which people do in their normal lives and in their families and in their work. Because that's another of the things that, uh, well, that's one of the main things that we, we looked at the confrontational part of politics of free. And just felt, what this is doing is it, it's taking energy. Uh, it's, just, it, it's not interesting, it's not engaging, but it's really distracting from actually making decisions which are good for the people of free. So we, we, that's the, the, the route that we took. Um, now, the, the, the challenge of that, and it's a particular, it's a bigger challenge as you get higher up the electoral system, I think, is that it means you don't have a view on anything yet, you don't have a manifesto, because you're going to find out what you should do from experts, and you're going to uh, consult properly. So you don't know uh, yet how you will vote as a group on plans for a new supermarket. So you don't have a manifesto which says we will vote against the new supermarket, because you don't know. But for us, that was a much more honest approach. It's quite tricky, as I say, to put across on the doorstep because people say, what are you going to do about the new supermarket? And you go, I don't know. Which, so, at our level, I think you can do that because you're saying, look, this is how we're going to do it. It gets a bit higher, further up. But anyway, that's what we did. And then clearly, the good people have really bought that because, or, you know, understood that process because five years later, they, you know, it gave us much, much more of a mandate because it's, much more difficult, obviously, for the second time to come back and say, we're going to give you more of what we've given you. In a way, we have to, we have, to have a track record. The first time, we could just say, that lot of crap and we're going to do better, which is quite relatively easy to sell, particularly in our case, um, as it was the case. Um, so, so, I mean, I'll give you very interesting to see what happens in whatever it is, 2019, whether we're able to maintain that, uh, that feeling. But I, I'm... I think there's enormous support for what we've done in the, in the town, or the way that we operate, because of all that lot list of things that Mel just mentioned, really, in the sense of us being much more human as individuals and the way that we operate as council, prepared to, well, not just prepared to, but very open about the mistakes and the challenges and so on in the debates and discussions we're having, um, and, and publicly are quite able to say, yeah, we did spend 20 grand on that and it was a waste of money, and, and here's the re, you know, we got it wrong because that's how we again that's how we behave in, in normal in normal life. It's, uh, it's quite interesting that there's very little bickering certainly publicly. You would you wouldn't do, there hasn't been an example in the last five years of, of, of public bickering. Even though up out of this, the seventeen do stretch right across the whole political spectrum. Uh, and so we do have quite interesting um, discussions in private in terms of where we're at. But because it's been, because there's no party to support, so because we do, we do win, like we're not that concerned about whether we win the next election. Uh, we're, you know, and, and because everybody really was selected on the basis of what can I do for this area, uh, then you can usually overcome it. And on most issues, to be honest, most you, know, you get ninety percent consensus. You know, it's usually around little bits which are not that crucial, which uh, which seem to cause cause the problem. So I, as leader, that's what you know. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Really, is just kind of massaging little bits and pieces of egos. Uh, uh, but, 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 but but actually, having observed lots of councils, it's very strange to see this group of independents working as perhaps the tightest groups <laughs> publicly. Uh, they, they will be there, but they will not actually be critical of one another or um, they're even, I mean, I've voted against the rest of them on yeah. two or three occasions. I think we so don't. that's not held against them. No, no, I think we, do, we debate better, actually, than certainly, you know, some, sometimes recently we've had, we've had some really fiery and good debates, which have then, as Mark said, led to a, led to a conclusion. One of the sort of the ways of working, which we, which we have, uh, is, you, don't, you then don't hold that against someone. One of the things that we found most obnoxious, if you like, about, about the way things were was that, you know, if I lose a vote, 
I'll, I'll wait until the next possible moment, and whether it's logical or not, I'll then, you know, stand both in the back who, who, who did for me. And that, that just means that we have to be able to move on and, and um, uh, you know, just accept that's the way it is. And alcohol plays a big part in what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Not in meetings, I think. One of the things that we have said right from the beginning is that at this level of local government, um, it has, it has, in fact, it's a voluntary. Why, you know, why would I bother? Um, what, you know, to, to, to continue to do this, why would I put in, you know, Mel and I are putting in hours of work, particularly at the moment, uh, you know, 20 hours a week for a voluntary time. That, there has to be part of that that, that uh, is, is a good fun as well. You have to think you're achieving something or <laughs> know you're achieving something, but also some of it has to be good fun. Sounding more and more like Nigel Farage. Um. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> What's the um, age profile of the um, of, of, of council? Uh, it'll be... In their four, I get the average as 40, 40 in their 40s. I'm the oldest and I'm 66. We had a mayor who was 21, um, and the youngest person now is, so, I mean, 30, 30, yeah, uh, two, 30 year old. They're quite a good range, um, in that sense, or, or better than I've been elsewhere. Do you, um, do you consciously try and encourage younger people to get involved as councillors, not just uh, participating in what the council is doing. Yes, we have quite a lot of, uh, 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 yes, we do, and that, as Mel mentioned, when we put together a mix, we were looking for an age range, um, or the group that we got to do that, an age range, a gender range, and also for us, as many towns, perhaps, uh, uh, there are people who come to live in through those people who've always lived in and we look for a mix of, of we've got a, a pretty much a, a half and half bit. So, so yes we do and, and, and we feel that's really important and uh, yeah, you're right it's also a lot of the work we're doing is aimed at, at younger people and one of the one of the youngest ones he probably is young so he, he's led that one of the panels that I mentioned which is looking at um, uh, the role of the arts and, uh, and, and, and improvement which has taken him into quite a, a sort of high profile position that's been great for him um, but also puts puts him out there as a, as a young person because a lot of the people who are involved in the music industry so on are younger so that's I, I'm sure that's helped to bring in people that perhaps I all know with them. So the, you, you, you are consciously succession planning really? Yeah, not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think some of the, yeah, politely, I mean, I certainly won't be carrying on next time, there's only people on me, so, so yeah, we are beginning to think about that, and I, and I do think there's a, there's a kind of pool of, of young people who are working in various um, third sector of voluntary groups in town that I think we might want to tap in a little bit more seriously before we run into the next election, because I, I do think we need a few more 20 year olds. So yeah, beginning to think about that uh, uh, more seriously and uh, certainly over the next couple of years I would hope that we would have some of that in place. Well I've just about covered all the ground that uh, I, I wanted to get through. Um, is there any final piece of advice you'd want to give the Commission when we're considering uh, whether we're going to be recommending um, serious devolution of powers to, to lower levels. Uh, I, I've been fun talking to you, uh, and I know that our ex experience is, is different, so I hope that you can take something from, from what you've said. Yes, it's very uh, valuable. I, I, think, um, I think it's about the role of the councillor. Uh, you know, and, uh, when I was at the IDA, we wrote all sorts of things about the role of the councillor. We were all rubbish. Um, so it, it's really, how, 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 that has got to fundamentally change in how they see the world, the nature of their relationship with our local community, and how they interact with the organisation, and how they're selected, I think is kind of key. And that's just going to be so tricky for you. So, 
everything you said to us properly uh, and B just to get your feedback on uh, any recommendations that we make if you're if you're happy to do that great yeah please I look forward to it uh, but in the meantime thank you very much indeed and uh, I'll let you get about your uh, your business 